What's up guys, Matt here coming to you from Laidlaw's Harley Davidson. So today I'm going to be showing off two of the 120th year anniversary motorcycles and the two that I'm going to be showing you are in the Softail family. So that's going to be your Fat Boy and your Softail Heritage Classic. So let's start off here with the Fat Boy and just so you guys know there are six motorcycles that are given this 120th year anniversary package or treatment, special paint and emblems throughout the bike, different covers, things like that. I'm going to be going into that in detail. And then there's also one CVO, which is the Road Glide Limited CVO in the anniversary package. The one and only CVO that they announced at the beginning of this model year. And so let's take a look at this Fat Boy here. So the Fat Boy has 3,000 of these bikes made globally. You can see here, this is number 21 of 3,000. So following suit that they've done in previous anniversary model years, Harley Davidson is serializing these bikes. So you can see exactly where your number lies within the total production of each model and this is definitely a good thing it can only help with the value of the bike down the road and I think in the hundred year anniversary which was in 2003 that's when these anniversary bikes really became like a thing and started to become really popular and I'm pretty confident they weren't serialized or numbered in 2003 but the next anniversary year which was in 2008 which is 105th year anniversary that's when they started serializing these bikes but Harley-Davidson every five years does release their anniversary bike so they celebrate every five years by applying a unique anniversary paint scheme and different covers and emblems and badging throughout the bike to celebrate every five years so 120 years is a pretty significant milestone and I can't always say that I've loved the anniversary paint choices in the past but this one I definitely do like 2003 I think was a slam dunk but in 2008 and in 2013 those were kind of eh to me what weren't my favorite the 115th anniversary that they celebrated in the 2018 model year was a great anniversary year in my opinion i really liked the legendary blue that they used on the bikes but they had 10 models that anniversary model year they had an anniversary breakout and they also had a 48 which those are two bikes that we didn't see this model year one because they didn't make a 48 in this model year but it seems like every anniversary model year we see they make less and less of these anniversary bikes which maybe the intention there is to make them rarer and therefore more desirable which is actually kind of working because these bikes are becoming harder to get and therefore they're more desirable than in years past but when you look at these bikes it's definitely more than just the paint on the fenders and the fuel tank although they do have that and this year Harley Davidson has really stepped it up and put some nice detailed paint work on these things you've got like this paneling paint job it looks like a two-tone red in one of the panels and has like a fade effect on the paint they're calling it the heirloom red which I think is a cool name as well and then all these anniversary model years they always do a very unique distinct badge on the fuel tank I think Harley Davidson did a good job on that but it's usually a really highly detailed metal badging that you see on the tank and it's usually an eagle in some form or fashion but besides the paint on the tins and the medallion on the tank you've got things like different covers like the air cleaner cover you've got a 120th year insignia and in font on the air cleaner cover and then on the derby cover as well the clutch cover you've got 120th year coloring and graphics on there and then also the cam timer cover is unique to the anniversary models as well and then the inlay on the center console where they have what serialized number of bike that you have that's also an anniversary themed center console insert with corresponding color as well and then you've got the anniversary seat so Harley Davidson is calling this reddish paneling on the seat an oxblood color that gives the seat definitely more detail and appeal to it and you got a couple different colors of stitching on this as well and then the Harley Davidson it's in embroidered in the leather seat there so a lot more effort and detail goes into the seating on all of these anniversary bikes as well now a frequently asked question I get is are these bikes any different mechanically and the answer is no you've got Harley Davidson's Milwaukee 8 114 cubic inch engine in the fat boy and the heritage and so performance wise suspension engine performance 
things like that, wheels, it's all identical to the regular Fat Boy. Here's a couple shots of the 2018 model year. This is at the Los Angeles Convention Center back when the motor company still did dealer shows where they have all the bikes in one place. So you can kind of see the Fat Boy here and the 18 model year, I've said this before, I'll set it again. The 18 model year is the best model year Harley Davidson has ever had just in terms of new awesome products that they launched that model year. And you had an anniversary model year, which was in my opinion, a great color, just one of the best looking anniversary bikes up until that point. You also had the biggest shakeup in Harley Davidson history when they did away with the Dyna and they brought all the Dyna and Softail models together on one common frame. And so the new Softail frame was launched that year, which in my opinion is the best frame that Harley Davidson has ever made. And that's when they first introduced the Milwaukee 8 into the Softail frame as well. But enough about the 18 model year. You can see here the Fat Boy has gone relatively unchanged since the 18 model year. Since I already mentioned that was the first year of a huge change. They did change the wheels on the Fat Boy one or two model years ago. They cut some holes in the disc mag that the Fat Boy has become so well known for. But other than that, there haven't been any huge significant changes on the Fat Boy in the last five years. The Fat Boy still reigns king as, in my opinion, the most iconic Harley Davidson ever built and currently in production. If you were to ask anybody who doesn't even ride motorcycles to name one model of a Harley Davidson, they're most likely going to say the Fat Boy. The Fat Boy's got that big fat 130 millimeter front tire and 240 millimeter rear tire. So this bike is a steamroller going down the road. Everything from the fender to the tank to the nacelle just kind of gives it that freight train, big, wide, muscular look to it. When the Fat Boy was redesigned in the 2018 model year, Harley Davidson applied what they call a satin chrome finish to all the engine and primary cases and everything on the bike to give it an even more unique and different appeal and aesthetic than the other soft tails in the lineup. And I actually really like that and I preferred that, but a couple model years ago, Harley Davidson actually switched back to the all chrome. And it seems to me that most of the fat boy buyers and fan base of this bike prefer just that traditional sheen chrome look as opposed to the satin chrome. Let me know what your guys' thoughts are. Do you like the satin chrome or do you prefer the regular traditional sheen chrome? On the Fat Boy, you've got that bullet hole center console, which has kind of become unanimous with the Fat Boy. And this year, Harley Davidson applied cruise control to several of its bikes that didn't before have cruise control. The Fat Boy is one of them, so you do have cruise on this bike from the factory now. The other two bikes I want to say are the Breakout and the Lowrider S. Now I'll have cruise control standard from the factory. You don't have it on the Street Bob, and you don't have it on the Softail standard, which I think now are the only two Softails that don't come with cruise standard from the factory. You've also got the USB port on the left-hand side of the bike, handy there for charging. I think this is probably not a very well-known feature on the Softail and probably a very underutilized feature on the Softail as well. So all you moto vloggers out there that want to charge a cell phone or charge a GoPro or whatever it may be, have a USB port on the left-hand side there for charging purposes. But overall, I think this anniversary package is very well executed. I'm actually not even really a big red guy, but I really do like this red. It's very tastefully done and it's got almost like this deep ruby look to it where it's kind of like a richer, more premium look in the paint as well. And the fading there on the center paneling on the side of the gas tank and on the fenders with that fade work, take this paint to a different tier in terms of just the, the artistry that's involved to produce something like this. All right guys, so let's jump over to harleydavidson.com real quick so we can take a close look at the pricing. So on a black regular stock fat boy, you've got $20,199. If you jump over here to the heirloom red fade, as you can see here, that's gonna add $1,500 to the MSRP. So you're gonna take this thing up to about 21.7 for the heirloom red anniversary fat boy here. So you see here that takes the price to $21,699. There is an ABS option on this bike, so $950 for the ABS. I'm pretty sure that all the anniversary bikes are just automatically equipped with ABS. So you can basically tack on a, you know, almost another $1,000 to that price tag. So you're now like $22,700 approximately for the anniversary bike. 
Now cruise control does come as a standard option and then you've got the surcharge at 750 and the freight at $700 and if you live in California it's $200 for the emissions charge there. So like I said you're about 22.7 for the fat boy in the 120th year anniversary heirloom red that includes the $950 optional fee for the ABS. All right, so let's jump over to the Heritage Classic now, one of Harley Davidson's staple models that they've had for a very long time now. And I think that's probably why they use some of the same bikes for every single anniversary model year is they wanna pick the models that are like the core models within each of the families within Harley Davidson. The Heritage has now been out for a very long time, consecutively, year after year. And I think it just checks a lot of the boxes for people. It's like your touring capable and focused model within the Softail lineup. It has a very classic appearance Peel. And for a long time, you know, my dad says in the 90s, like the Heritage was by far the best selling bike. You know, a lot of people want to think that like the FXRs were like the hot sellers in the 90s, but really it was the Heritage that was the bread and butter for, for dealerships in the 90s. But you can see here the anniversary treatment extends all the way to the saddlebags on this bike as well. So that's like an extra 120th year anniversary influence that you don't see on other bikes. So you see that oxblood leather trim on the top of the saddlebag lid there with the Heritage studs there in black. What do you guys think? The Heritage for us out here on the West Coast doesn't sell anywhere near what like the Lowrider ST sells. You know, and I'm just comparing it to the Lowrider ST because they're both like the touring focused soft tails at this point. But I hear in the Midwest and, and maybe on the East Coast as well, the Heritage still sells very well. But let me know what you guys think about the Heritage. I'd be curious to know. You guys think that's still a really relevant model within Harley Davidson's lineup? Or do you think that maybe they should put it on like a two or three year hiatus? The lighting is definitely nice. This is the only soft tail in the lineup that has the main seven inch headlamp with those auxiliary passing lamps on the outside. They used to have that set up on the deluxe, but now that the deluxe is discontinued, you've only got that headlight set up on just the Heritage. So a really nice headlight set up on here. Saddlebags are lockable now. They really gave this bike a pretty good overhaul in the 2018 model year when they went to a more rigid saddlebag, gave it more space, made it so it could be locked. And of course you've got the chrome trim on the engine here. Honestly guys, the black trim bikes and the 120th year anniversary paint scheme heirloom red look really good, like the road glide and the street glide. So I really don't know what I like better, the chrome or the black. I might actually say that I like the black a little bit better because that's kind of my preference anyways, you know, aside from the whole anniversary paint scheme. Of course, you got the 114 cubic inch Milwaukee 8 on this bike. I do, however, feel like the chrome is a little bit more of the correct choice for the heritage just because I feel like the chrome goes along with the classic appeal of the heritage a little bit more. So if I were to choose one, I'd probably stick with the chrome on this model. You can see it there too, like that leather stripping on the center console for the heritage. You've got an anniversary touch there with the leather stripping that matches like your saddlebags. And you've got the anniversary serialization on the handlebar top clamp there, which is a little bit different than all the other models. So you can see here, this is number 56 of 2000 made. At the beginning of the model year, I thought there was less than 2000 made. So I actually messed up on my initial video I made on this model year. You've got 2,000 of these bikes. So a thousand less than what they produce in the Fat Boy at 3,000. And as you can see, the seat shares a lot of the same styling that the Fat Boy does. Of course, you've got the black studs in the seat. And this year, they only do the heritage with the laced wheels. In recent years past, we saw the wheels, like a wagon style mag wheel, which I didn't like personally. I like the spoke appeal on the heritage. I do think the Heritage is one of the most underrated bikes that Harley Davidson has in the lineup right now. I say that because it does so many things so well. The seat is really comfortable. You have the taller of the two shocks in the soft tail model lineup. And so the ride is really comfortable. You've got the wind deflection right from the factory with the windshield that you can take off and have that real classic stripped down deluxe look if you want. You've got the LED passing lamps that I mentioned earlier. So, you've got, so you have extremely good lighting with the three lights up front. So the ride comfort is good. The wind deflection is good. You've got the saddlebags from the factory, so you've got good storage space. I think for most people, it's just a styling hang up, which I think is unfortunate. I mean, you've got a passenger setup on this bike as well, which on the Lowrider ST, you don't have the passenger setup from the factory. So I think anybody that does wants more of the touring focused bike that can ride with the passenger, that has the storage space, that has the, the comfort out on the highway, that doesn't necessarily want to go up to the full-blown touring chassis platform, the Heritage is actually a pretty dang good option. 
I think a lot of people just overlook and dismiss the heritage. Again, I'm just speaking about customers on the West Coast here. Maybe they sell like hotcakes out in the Midwest or something like that, I don't know. So let's take a close look at the heritage and the pricing involved in that bike. So just a regular black one, base price is $21,199 here. And then that goes up as you change things on the bike. There is both paint and the trim on the engine. So on the Heritage, you do have the black trim option. On the Anniversary bike, however, it is only offered in the chrome trim. So that's gonna be $1,500 upcharge to the MSRP. So you're looking at about 22.7 for the Heritage here. ABS is actually standard on the Heritage, not standard on the Fat Boy. so that's kind of interesting. And Cruise Control, of course, is standard. It's been standard on the Heritage now for a really long time. But the Anniversary here with the chrome finish, 22.7. You know, I, I didn't really know this until I did this video, but yeah, you're looking pretty much the same price on both of the bikes. Another very commonly asked question that I get in the dealership surrounding these anniversary models is how to get one. So the motor company is randomly sending out these bikes to dealerships in very small quantities, but really the best way that you can guarantee yourself one of these bikes is to work directly with a dealer and leave them a deposit or whatever reservation system that they have in place that's specific to their dealership and basically get one ordered. The motor company does have a dealership reservation system system in place that allows them to special order these bikes on a per customer basis. So when a customer calls me and says, hey Mac, give me a call when the anniversary road glide comes in, I tell them the only ones that are coming in already have names attached to them. I will not be getting some of the more popular anniversary edition motorcycles like the road glide special, for example, just randomly showing up to the dealership. It does require someone making a commitment to the dealership enough to order one, put their name on it and wait for one. At our dealership, we do have a deposit system of $500 that we ask people to leave, but every dealership is gonna be a little bit different. Also, I would recommend if you do want an anniversary edition motorcycle, you should probably call a dealership and make a reservation very soon because these are very limited. And some of the more popular models like the Road Glide, like I mentioned, and like even the Tri Glide have very long wait times even at this point. If you want the CVO Road Glide Limited, I'd say at this point in time, good luck. The one or maybe possibly two that we get this model year, are already spoken for. So if you wait halfway or three quarters of the way through the model year, you're probably not gonna get an anniversary bike unless it's one that a dealership just randomly has left over. Anyways, guys, that's about it. Let me know what your opinion is on the 120th anniversary edition motorcycles is. Is this your favorite anniversary edition thus far that you've seen? If not, what was your favorite anniversary year? And if you live in Southern California and you're looking for one of these bad boys, make sure you hit us up here at Laidlaw's Harley Davidson. And if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. We'll see you on the next one. I'm Matt Laidlaw. Later. Thank you.